I'm, I'm simply saying that life finds a way. Write something on the board. Let's spell it. First letter. L. O. E. What's that? What? It's time. It's time to have real, honest, open, difficult, and inspiring conversations. It's time for Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. Well, hello there, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. That is wurdradio.com. You know what it is. Today is Tuesday, May 2nd, and I am your host, Carol Riddick, and I am joined by none other than Mr. Niall Jax, who's filling in for Miss Kayla Jade this evening. And he is going to make sure everything runs smoothly. I just want to say thank you again. Just thank you for joining us. You know, I love it when you spend some time, your energy and your attention with us. And you know what I like to do before we get started? I like to do a little check-in. Those, uh, those are our family members who... Uh, visit with us regularly you know but for those of you who are new to the show we'd like to check in so family members to those of you who are on our socials send us a hello let us know that you're ready and willing to join the conversation let us know that you're sending us some love and to our family members who are listening but are not watching we feel you you know we do and all the love that each of you send is always greatly appreciated and lastly but certainly not least, for any of our family members whose light is shining just a little dimly today, you know I like to send you some extra love and hugs because we all need that sometimes. I know that I do, okay? And also, because I believe we should all be celebrated if today is your birthday or if I missed your birthday, happy birthday to you. Charge that to uh, my head, please, and not to my heart, because you know there's always love. I always have love for you. <laughs> you know that I do. I'm going to take a moment to go to our socials. Hey there, Nasir. Nasir is saying hello. Good evening, Sister Carol, and guests, peace and blessings. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, you know, I always say as much time that we believe we have on the show, it goes by so quickly, so, so, so quickly, you know how it goes. Um, so what I'm going to do first, before I bring our guests into the room, I want to read to you a little bit about them. For those who are unfamiliar, I don't know if anybody on the planet is, I can't imagine that you are. But for these two individuals whom I love, love, love so dearly, uh, I want you to know as much as you can know about them before they come and say hello. Uh, one of our guests this evening, I will say ladies first, let's do that. Ladies first, the queen that she is. How about that? I'm going to read some information for you. How about that? Uh, Deanna Williams is one of our guests tonight, my beloved, as you all know. And if you didn't know, now you know. <laughs> she is an entertainment powerhouse who is a beloved advocate and authority in pop culture, especially Black music. The veteran award-winning on-air personality is a trailblazer in broadcasting, music activism, and celebrity media strategy. She's been a staple in radio since the 70s, and she's been a frequent commentator on the highly acclaimed TV One music series, Unsung. She's 
also co-executively produced the Teddy Pendergrass episode of Unsung, which garnered an NAAC Image Award. There's so much that I could say about this woman. So, so, so much I could say about this human being. Um, there's so much that I could read to you from her bio, but what I want you to know is that she is one of the most gentle and sweetest spirits that I have ever known. And that has been from day one. And when I tell you, if she loves you, you know it. You hear me? If she loves you, you know it. Um, we're going to talk today with both Will Delming and Deanna Williams just about life. Okay, so for this moment, I'm going to read to you some information, or should I say share some information to, with you before I bring them in the room. Will Downing, our other guest, as I was saying, has a career spanning over 36 years and 26 albums. He is one of the most versatile and loved voices of our time. Known as the Prince of Sophisticated Soul, his repertoire consists of signature interpretations of R&B classics like I Go Crazy, Wishing on a Star, and I Try. You know, I know you know those. Notwithstanding his original hits, A Million Ways, and Sorry I, and the show-stopping duet with Rochelle Farrell, Nothing, has ever felt like this. His distinctive baritone voice has resonated in the hearts of everybody, every human being I know, worldwide, and has carved a unique niche in the music marketplace. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, he also hosts his weekly radio show, The Wind Down, which airs on over 20 stations around the world, including the United States, the UK, Japan, and Spain. I invite you to get to know just a little better both Ms. Deanna Williams and Mr. Will Downing. Well, hello there, beautiful family. How are you? Both. <laughs> Not okay. <laughs> so see what we do here for you? You see what we do here for you? <laughs> that was for her, but I just kind of jumped in. You just kind of jumped out. Uh, well, that's not the one that has all those little records, you know. What did you say, Carol? Listen. 36, 26? What was it? 56? Okay. Uh, okay. Right, okay. These are just reminders that I used to be somebody. That's all. Yeah, right. I am somebody, and so are you. you see me? <laughs> Thank you. This Thank man you. Used to be. Uh, first of all, I just want to publicly say again thank you to the both of you for coming here to join me because, you know, we all chit and chat offline all the time you know i clown and, and i tell you my stories because there's always something going on in my life but um the both of you oh look at this. but the both of you are always there to listen so i appreciate that and, I, and you know i say on this show right here on this platform i like to tell everybody that communication is key i believe everything uh, i believe something from everybody's life you know, could play an integral part in another person's life. Like, you know, could spark them along their journey. So I love it when we talk and when we share and all of that good stuff. And we, amongst the three of us, we've shared enough life. Lord have mercy. Heavens to Mercator and all that good stuff. But don't y'all tell all my secrets, okay? Ooh, what? Huh? <laughs> Not all no, of them. Okay? Revelations tonight. <laughs> no. All love and life. <laughs> -U -R -D. Carol, you left out one of the most important things. I'm I a know. frequent guest commentator. Yes, I know. W U R D. Wait, oh, you know what? You know why? You know what happened? You, it was you. I was trying. I was listening. I said, "Will, Will was clowning me, y'all. Family, let me tell you what happened." So before the show started, I said, "I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this." And this is what I'm saying to myself. I had like five paragraphs of stuff that I was going to say about you, Deanna. And then Will said, oh, well, you will never get, you know, we're going to be here all night. We will. Just talk about her, like, you know, the bee and the bologna, the cheese all, and the macaroni. I the same about you, too. I mean, I could do the same about you, too, Mr. Uh, well, and, and we could do the same about you. Oh, heavens exactly. to my Thank you, Will. But she is absolutely right, family members. So I know you are familiar, W-U-R-D family. I'm beyond familiar with both of these incredible human beings. Um, but we thought we would come on here tonight as we start the month of May. Heaven, do you believe it? We're in May already? I don't believe it. I it doesn't feel it. like it outside, but you know, it's May. 
my god i was gonna say where is this may in alaska like where where is <laughs> it winter just got the memo like it's time to be winter oh I'm... it's may what does that mean <laughs> this feels like march like yeah. we got the m's confused or something Exactly. But um, I want to take a moment to acknowledge one of our family members on our socials, Heather. Hey there, Heather Wilson, um, one of my beloveds as well. Hey, one of my lovely ladies. Thank you for joining us. I love it when our family members reach out to us and say hello and show us some love. I love it, love it. Um, family, what I do want to make you aware of, I don't want to wait to do so, um, is that if you at any point would like to join the conversation, you too can do so. You can do so by commenting on our socials or you can call us at 215-634-8065 or you can call us toll free at 1-866-361-0900. So, Will, I don't like that. What does that look? You look like you're processing what? information over Oh, no. No, I'm, oh, reading on a, I'm reading on the side here. So. See, I knew I knew it. I knew it. So I said, oh, he's processing some information. Yeah, you see me? I was trying to find some. I was trying to find some quarters to call you. See, see, you see, family. Do you see what happens? You see, what happens here. You know, I was just thinking what we have in common is radio as well as music. Of course, you and Will have a lot in common because you sing together, and Will has told me consistently over the years that my singing. Uh, leaves a lot to be desired and that perhaps I should just stick to talking on the radio. I've been told that by Will Downing and <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Um, we're long time friends. We know each other's lives and we've been intricately involved with one another for some time, but we all have done radio. I just True. realized because Will does the wind down, which is fabulous. Oh, you know, thank it's, you. It's a wonderful blend of you know, of the, of the foundational music with today's artist as mm. well. And you being a musician and an artist, a songwriter, producer, um, engineer, you do it all, a record company executive, you do it all, a publicist, a manager, a concert promoter, everything. But your insight <laughs> with your radio show is remarkable. And also, I mean, you're an artist. Years ago, Carol, I don't know if you remember this, but I pushed him like crazy to do a book of his she photographs. Did. Oh, she did. I pushed a book of photographs some time ago, which should be reissued, but that's another story. His work is impeccable. I mean, he's an insider. So the eye and the sensitivity that you brought to those images. I mean, I still have a few of your photographs and I think they're exquisite. And then I went on to do a photo exhibition with Will and four other photographers. Oh, and shoot, we yeah. The African American Museum in Philadelphia, 7th right. of March, took the exhibition to Atlanta. Then That's we right. went to New Orleans. Remember, Will, you came to Absolutely. the museum. Absolutely. In so we traveled with this exhibition. So I'm very proud of Will Downey as a photographer as well. Uh, how you can call me a photographer standing next to Augie Ogborn and and, and all the uh, amazing photographers. Arnold was a part of it as well. Arnold you know, yeah, Arnold Turner. Like, I mean, phenomenal photographer. So, so thank you for inviting me. Appreciate that. Yeah, but you know, I've seen your work too. I mean, but she the, tells no lies. I've seen your work too. You, you know that I have, but I did not know that you had a traveling exhibit. I had no idea. See, well, it, you know what's interesting? Okay, so Dee Dee. Uh, I'm, I'm beginning to wonder because this little triad here, we have radio in common, we have music in common. Uh, are you, do you have any photography skills in there anywhere? You know what? I, I studied photography in high school and I thought for a brief moment that I would be a photographer. I love photography. I have it all throughout my home. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, there were two people that I just longed to meet. There were two people that was like, for me, if I meet these people, then I've arrived. I and know one. Well, mm -hmm. Will knows one of them. Oh, I yeah. believe I know one. Gordon. Well, Gordon Parks, yeah. Not, yeah, but we both said Gordon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Gordon Parks. Mm -hmm. Gordon Parks, great photographer, director, novelist, poet. Mm -hmm. You know, just a renaissance man. I tend to be attracted to people who are uh, multi-hyphenates, mm -hmm. if you will. People who have 
No, this serious. Like those are, I mean, I love all folks. Hyphen. The exception it's of just, a piece when he's on his own. <laughs> <laughs> I, had to, I had to look up the word like hyphen, hyphen, hyphen it. <laughs> but but Gordon Hart and the other one was Deborah Willis, who is oh, also yeah. a world renowned photographer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, when I met her and we became friends, I was like, I'm a made woman. But they were both photographers. So my daddy took pictures. I, I have an affinity for, for art in general, but photography, mm -hmm. definitely. See, I yeah. didn't know Papa George took photos. I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, my daddy it. was also a photographer. I found out about your love for Gordon Parks when we were in San Francisco, when we happened upon that exhibit. Do you remember that? I do. We, I we, do. We happened upon an exhibit, just taking a stroll around San Francisco. And it, we spent the entire afternoon because we looked at every single photograph. It was the most magical moment. It, it really incredible. was. And then Deanna told me the story of how she met him. So I was, uh, uh, oh. I, I went, I immediately went and bought a coffee table book uh, of his work. Oh yeah, hey, Gordon, that's the real deal right there. Ed. Yes, yes. Oh wow, look at the photo. This is the yeah. first time I met him. Mm -hmm. It's hard to see. I know it's a little dark. I have lights on, but it's still not. Yeah, oh, I can see. It. Oh, that's mm -hmm. incredible. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. was the very first day that I met him. And some years later, I gave him a copy of this photograph and he put it in his house. Uh, oh, wow. so the next time I went to visit and I saw the photograph in the living room with his children and his ex-wives and, you know, the whole crew. <laughs> I was like, I made, I made the living room, okay? <laughs> you know you somebody when you made the living room. I was somebody. I made, I made the living Well, I mean, there's truth to that, you know. <laughs> there's truth to that. <laughs> okay, that's like that's a strong statement. There's truth to that. <laughs> oh, family, if you have just joined us, you are tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. That's wurdradio.com. Listen, we are talking. The conversation has just begun. You know what we like to do here. We talk a little, we laugh a little. There may be a teardrop every now and again, but we're going to talk tonight and share. We're going to share and we're inviting you to do the same with us. Some of our family members are on our socials and are joining us. Alfredia, hey, Fred, good evening, all she writes. Carol Riddick and my forever friend. Oh, that is, you know what? Love, love. And Lily, Good evening to you as well. She writes, good evening, good evening to everyone, including the special guests and the WURD family and friends. I love it when our family members pop in and say hi to us. I just love the love. So, yeah, oh, I love, wait, that looked like a, what is it, spirit hands? Yeah, <laughs> jazz hands. Or, jazz uh, hands. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the member that didn't make Lady Smith Black Mombazo. How about that? Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> So family, if you have just joined us, we were talking about the things that we, this triad right here, have in common. And it's so funny because we talk all the time, you know, but every now and again, one of us will say, oh, you know what? We so-and-so and such and such. Like we don't know each other at all, which is the funniest <laughs> thing to me. It is like just now because we, we're so used to being who we are and going about doing what we do. And then when we have a moment like this, like, I never thought about it. Our connection, you know, to photography, to music. To, we have so many connections. How about that? That's true. We have that's so true. many connections. But that's a beautiful thing. That's love right there. So uh, I invited our beloveds, my beloveds. I don't know that anybody loves them like I do. So I invited them to come and sit and talk with me tonight to talk about life. You know, I've been telling you all that May is uh, the month to recognize mental health awareness. And I tell you all, I'm on this journey. You know, I'm, I'm on a journey every day to try to make sure that uh, I'm doing better and I'm good. I don't mean that to sound like, you know, I have anything that's that needs some help. But at the same time, there's so many things that we could all say that we want to improve upon. And, and I'm always looking to do better. Um, but, as I fill you in on that, I realize the time and it's time for us to take just a short break. So family, I tell you what, stay with us, okay? Because we will be right back. Okay. 
For more than a decade, Comcast has been committed to bridging the digital divide in Philadelphia and across the country. From connecting people to the internet to opening doors for the next generation of innovators, entrepreneurs, and storytellers, they are helping to create a future that benefits generations to come. Now, Comcast is expanding their efforts through Project Up, their comprehensive initiative to help build a future of unlimited possibilities. Backed by a $1 billion commitment to reach tens of millions of people over the next decade, Comcast is working to ensure all Philadelphians have the skills, resources, and opportunities they need to participate and excel in an increasingly digital world. This includes partnering with community experts to build a network of digital navigators, trusted individuals who help build awareness around initiatives like the government's Affordable Connectivity Program, and teach critical digital skills to get more people online. Project Up, building a future of unlimited possibilities. Learn more at Comcast.com slash Project Up. Through Project Up, Comcast is committing $1 billion to build a future of unlimited possibilities. The Museum of the American Revolution invites you and your family to AmRev Presents, a Black Founders musical experience with the Jeremy Winston Chorale. Featuring more than 20 Chorale members, this concert is inspired by the world of the museum's current exhibition, Black Founders, The Fortson Family of Philadelphia, and will include a world premiere in honor of the exhibit, one night only, May 12th at the Museum of the American Revolution. Information and tickets at amrevmuseum.org. Here's what you missed on Wake Up With Word. Joining us now is attorney Damon Tyner. He's a former Atlantic County prosecutor. We're talking about the case of an 85-year-old white man who shot a black teen when that teen came to the man's front door in Kansas City, Missouri last week. The teen was looking for his twin brothers. The young man was 16 years old. His name is Ralph Yarl, and he is now recovering at home. So he got charged with assault. He didn't get charged with, with attempted murder. I don't know what went into the decision making in this case to not charge attempted murder. I would suspect that maybe the, the district attorney out there didn't feel that he had the intent. You know, from the little bits of pieces that have come out, they've said that, you know, he thought someone was trying to break into his home. He was afraid. But then you start hearing other stories and other things that uh, as you unpeel that onion, he actually had eyes on him and saw who it was mm-hmm. and directly and, and intentionally fired a shot. Two shots at this young man. Not only did he hit him in his head, he stood over him, apparently, and fired a shot into his abdomen. Tune in to Wake Up With Word with Solomon Jones every Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. Only on WURD. Progressive Black Talk Media. This is your celebration. I'm Patricia Kanana Duckett from United Healthcare Community Plan, and I want to wish WURD a happy 20th anniversary. Um, for those of you that do not know, WURD and United Healthcare Community Plan have a very long standing history, and we'd love to continue the partnership and continue um, doing much work. Again, happy 20th anniversary. Thank you so much. We're celebrating 20 years of progressive Black talk media you're listening to love and life with carol riddick on wurd progressive black talk media Hey there, welcome back. You're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. Family, I invite you to join us during Philly Tech Week, Tuesday, May 9th at 6 p.m. at the University City Science Center for a Word Mayoral Forum focused on inclusion, innovation, and Philadelphia's future. At this event, a panel of word hosts will question the mayoral candidates on their plans to include black Philadelphians in the city's investments in technological growth. Register at wordradio.com forward slash tech week. University City Science Center is located at 3675 Market Street. Word is proud to partner with University City Science Center as well as Technically Philly and Philly Tech Week to present this forum, which is part of Every Voice, Every Vote. Please join us. 
So at this time, since we're coming back, before we continue the conversation here in this room, I believe we have one of our family members on the phone. Are you there with us? Are you still there? Yes, I am, Cal. Cal and Mr. Will and the other lady. Y'all are very, you are two old things. Are very fortunate to sit at the foot of the musical genius, Mr. Will. And what I am talking about, this guy here, and I have a question I want to ask him before I conclude. You know, Mr. Will would probably choose like this one that had a music, uh, thing about a music career. And Will would say these words. When you wish upon a star, it makes no difference who you are. And even as a singing musician that you want to be, oh, you can never lose with that, Will would tell them. Yes, if you're going to be able, you'll get an opportunity to display your talent. And because of Will, because what you have given in this world in music, and that's a very important thing. Your, you, your family and you and Cal and the lady that's there, yes, you was a part of the soul stirs. I mean, because any time that music stirs up the soul, it's a wonderful thing. So we thank you, Will, for all that you have given. And you probably oh, thank say this, and, and, and some of your writing, you probably say this, nothing stays the same. The young becomes the old, Mr. V unfold. It's what you do in life that can make a difference. Each one of your legacy will, 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 will leave these words, precious memories, oh, how they forever, uh, how they forever linger. And each one of y'all, you could not have achieved what you achieved, Mr. Will, unless you go back and visit your, your family, your mother in particular. My right. question I would like to ask you, Mr. Will, at the Uptown Theater, who was the number one smallest rapper at the Uptown during that era there when you had a rub? Sonny Hobson, you had Butterball, you had all of those type of rub, you know, rappers back in the day. Who was the smallest guy? You can name that. I'll give, give you a gift, Mr. Bicket, <laughs> for a pint of ice cream, for a pint of ice cream, sir, for a pint of ice cream, sir. Who was the smallest rapper ever did <laughs> in your town during that time, Mr. Will? That would have to be you, probably, because you're no, the no, smoothest. No, no, come on, don't, don't pander now. Don't pander now. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, Ron. Ron. Yeah, hey, hey, Cal, listen, Mr. Bill, who was that? Do you out of the well, rap? You Ron, you are you what are you doing to my guests? What is happening? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not I'm I'm paying Mr. Bill a compliment. You know, he's not, he's not a young boy anymore, right? I want to see how good his memory is. <laughs> oh, oh, so you call to test my guests. I, 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 I know that I know that, that Cal, but listen, the uh, name of the guy, Mr. Bill, and your voice, just around I'm leading that cow. Okay. Your voice, Mr. Bill. The guy named was Lloyd Funderoy. Remember him? No, he doesn't. It's more, it's what you're talking. Listen, <laughs> sir, what's your name again? This is Ron. This is Dr. Ron. 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 I'm the lady. Yes, you were talking about me, the lady. I'm Deanna Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma and, and Lord Funderoy was a friend of mine. Will was not <laughs> even born. Will was not born. Okay. Oh, oh, born yeah, I'm sorry. How did I miss you, Will? <laughs> That, that's okay. Ron, you, he's not that, that wrong. But, but ma'am, let me ask you then. Wasn't he a smooth operator? Is he a smooth operator? Yes, ma'am. You know his style. His oh, delivery. absolutely. No, he's... And, he's and this, is, this is for you. This here is for you. Lloyd Funderoy used to say this. Howdy, neighbor, bound down to this part of town. I call on George Kirby, bring my derby. And this is where we at at the uptown. So I know my cup running over, and thank you, Cal, for allowing me to say this. And Cal, I want to thank you for your program last night, for you to relive the lady uh, that you uh, that you give that you gave the tribute to. Nice. Oh yes, she had a mental nice. problem, but Cal, because what you have done, Cal, what you have done, Cal, and, and Mr. Wood, you will remember this with your grandparents and them. When you mention their name, they live forever. Thank you, Cal. Thank, Thank you, boy, for your gift. The man said it yesterday. Your gift, you have a gift, Cal, beyond singing. Your words, the power of your words, and you know how to use words for the greater good. Thank, Thank all y'all. May you be blessed for the rest of your life. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so sir. Much. Thank you, Ron. Ron is our friend to the show. He's a friend to the Word family, the WURD family. And we appreciate all the positivity that Ron brings us whenever he stops by. 
Well, Listen, I was trying to get that ice cream. <laughs> you, I was I, trying to get that ice cream certificate. I'm like, I, know, I was going through the roller decks of my mind. I was like, okay, come on, come on, mind, work a little fast. Well, I gotta well, get this ice cream. You don't well, understand. The way Deanna <laughs> laughed, I didn't, I didn't think that that thought was going to come to you because I think when when you laughed, D, the sorry. laugh alone, Will looks like I don't know, I don't know what is happening. No, I don't know who I he's think talking it was the about. Mr. Will part that. Yeah. <laughs> And Will is not, he does that was be, that was a generation before Will. Yeah, yeah. Just, but it, it, well, Will because he was asking him about things that were just that with of which he was unaware. Will, I will I will buy you some ice cream. I will buy you. You know ice cream. cream. You know ice cream, give me gas. Don't give me no ice cream. <laughs> no, you, know ice cream. No. you know what I just you know. I was gonna re-gift it to someone else. I was gonna re-gift it to, to the lady. The, the lady. <laughs> Don't you, you know yeah. what? <laughs> Family, do you hear the shenanigans? This is what we do. This is what we do. And Mr. Will. Oh, and Mr. I want Will, you. Carol, and the lady. Did you know what? <laughs> you are so bad. <laughs> I want to take this time to oh, recognize God. another one of our family members that is joining us oh, on our social. Lily, oh, more. There's more. Oh. Lily, <laughs> Lily says thanks for having one of the greatest <laughs> jazz artists known to mankind, Mr. Will Downing. Major Thank you, Lily. So, so, so <laughs> you know, you you hear me, you hear me, Lily, you hear me. You try to, this man, this ice cream jokes. You all are a mess. <laughs> okay. So, so you know what's going to happen? I know what's going to happen. The three of us are going to have a conversation after the show. We're going to talk about this particularly. The after okay. show. The after oh, show. Oh, oh after just show wait. The after party. <laughs> oh, just okay. wait. <laughs> okay, the after party. <laughs> Mr. Will. Mr. Will. So, Mr. Yeah, Will. Yeah, lady. <laughs> what do you want, lady? <laughs> you all don't you listen ron he means well he has the biggest heart he means well he is oh. our friend oh <sighs> so lady and mr will yeah have a yes that's going, yes, to be my joke. that's going to be my forever <laughs> joke <I love> <laughs> oh Family, I'm wow. sorry. We're having too much fun at your expense. So, so if you have just joined us, welcome. Welcome to the shenanigans of Carol Riddick, Deanna Williams, and Will Downing. Okay. This, our episode tonight, we're talking about love. We're talking about what well, we intend to talk about, navigating the loss of a loved one. But, you know, because we all have a happy inside our hurt, this is what you hear right now this is what you're witnessing a happy inside each of our hurt because we can talk about our loved ones and we can be happy in doing so because that's what love is that's, that's exactly what, is. what love is you know I, I know we all have moments we all god knows deanna knows i've had enough i've called her in in the midst of enough of my moments because sometimes when you're grieving it hits you at the most what seemed to be inopportune times <laughs> And that has happened to me <laughs> when you have those breakdowns, when you, you're, you're in the, either in the supermarket, I've had that, or I've been uh, driving along on my way to a gig or to an event. I've had that. <laughs> it just hits me. Or I'll hear a song. Sure. Or I don't know if you've ever had this where you smell that person. You'll smell their scent. Yeah. Like I've smelled my mother so many times. That I've, I mean, to the point where I've looked like expecting and expecting her to be there, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but it, I mean, it's, it warms me, it warms me. But at the same time, you have that 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 reminder, you know, that it's it's like that jolt of pain, that sudden jolt of pain, just really quickly. But then you get yourself together and you say, you know what, I love you, and you say thanks for saying hello. <laughs> mm. But that's what I do. I said, oh, she just gave me a kiss. I say thanks for saying right. hello. That's that's the way I like to receive it. That's the way I like to um, navigate it. That it actually helps me. Now I don't I don't know, and I'm, this is why we're here because I want to ask, you know, what are some of the things that you two do? But I I like to do that. I have my little conversations with myself. Don't y'all talk about me too badly. But that's what I do. Okay. That's what I do. I like to talk to me and say, well, you know that you know what you're doing. And, and because when you know their personalities, 
you tend to see their personality in the things that are happening in that moment. Like I, uh, uh, I hear um, my mother would play, uh, you are my love, you are my heaven. Oh yeah, Donny Hathaway and, and uh, Roberta, and Roberta Flack. Flack. Yeah. I love that song, but I grew up, grew up listening to that song and Rise by Herb Alpert. I think my mother oh, yeah. had two, two, she had two 45s. Now my uncle had a speakeasy, so that's where I listened to all the music. So that's, you know, you all heard that conversation. But my mother had two 45s and those were the two 45s. Well, she had two albums. They were Johnny Mathis and uh, Barbara Streisand. But in any event, you are my love, you are my heaven. When I hear that come on, as soon, I mean, I, I can easily identify it. And I recognize that as her saying hello. Now, the reason I say that is because you don't hear that song often. Right. You don't hear it, I don't hear it often anywhere. So when I do, I say, oh, what are you doing here? What are you doing? Well, you well, well listen, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna let you feel uh, any kind of way uh, but any, and, and feeling any kind of strangeness in a song reminding you of uh, a loved one. Mm -hmm. I remember when my father passed away, the song that would come on, that would always, was two of them. One was Statue of a Fool. I don't know if you guys know that song. That's one. That was one of his favorite songs. And the other one was uh, Color That Man Father, uh, which was, I believe, Clarence Carter. Mm -hmm. And I remember driving down the highway not long ago, and that mm -hmm. song came on, and I had to pull over. And I'm on, like, I was on the turnpike. I was like, yep, you know what? I'm going to have to sit over here for a minute and get myself together. Yeah. So don't feel bad. No, <laughs> you know, you're, 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 you're normal. You're, 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 yeah, you're, you're normal. I'm normal. You're normal. What was the question that you asked, Dee? I was asking, was it Dennis Edwards who did the first song? Oh, uh, no, that was... Um, One of the Temptations? The tempta Yeah. Uh, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm looking at his face. Uh, David Ruffin. David Ruffin, okay. Ah, okay. David Ruffin, okay. yeah. yeah. David Ruffin. Wow. That's over fool. That was his yeah. jam, boy. That yeah. song, come on, I still ah, you, well, <laughs> lose it. <laughs> you know what? And it, it's like my, um, my grandfather's song is Midnight Train to Georgia. Oh, okay. To this day, to this day, you if you've ever been around me, because you'll see the tears, they, they just start coming. Midnight Train to Georgia. That was his song. That was that yeah. was his song of every and and it it never ends because it hits me the same way. Like it's the first time I'm hearing it. The, the mm -hmm. same way as and, and now it's of course you are my love, you are my heaven. But yeah. I mean, and it's funny though because as much as you love them and you love these songs, like you welcome that that little hurt for that moment because it's just that that much of a reminder. It just feels like they're they're there with you in that moment. Well, me, yeah. it's like you know, I'm like mom, why you do this to me today? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I, I, I tend to do that. Family, um, we've just begun a conversation that I'm inviting you to join. I'm inviting you to reach out to us on our socials, or you can even call us at two one five six three four eight zero six five, or you can call us toll free at one eight six six three six one zero nine hundred but what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a break um just a short one but stay with us okay because we'll be right back yo 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 this is king earner coming to you guys live and direct if you're looking for a home care agency with honor then good brothers home care fits the bill and besides the honor good brothers have great paid benefits and experienced caregivers so if you're in the need of home care services or would like to transfer to an agency contact us at 215-874-9300 that's 215-874-9300 or hit us up on the web at goodbrothershomecare.com this is the story of a very special woman in a matter of seconds, she turned herself into a great mathematician or an entrepreneur. Her knowledge was limitless and still is. She could also make monsters disappear, especially those that lurked in the shadows under the bed. Once, this woman put back together a teenage girl's broken heart, which had been shattered in a thousand pieces just by giving her a bear hug. She masqueraded as a regular person at work but as a superhero at home. Everyone knows her as Gabriella. I still call her mom. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need to help, complete with tips and resources at aarp.org caregiving.
a public service announcement brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. What are you waiting for? If you've been enjoying the information and interviews WURD provides every day or come out to our community events, it might be time to become a member. This year marks the 20th anniversary of WURD, and there's no better time to join the forward movement. Sign up or renew your sustaining membership at just $90 or your digital membership for just $5 a month. Join online at wordradio.com forward slash membership or pick up the phone and give us a call at 215 425 7875 press 4 for assistance the time to join is now what am i waiting for what is love you're listening to love and life on wurd progressive black talk media i think i know Family, welcome back. You are tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media on air and online at wordradio.com. We just took a short break. Uh, I told you we'd be right back. For those of you who are joining on our socials, we're so happy to see you there. Hi there, Simple Life. Simple Life writes, good evening. I absolutely adore the song dedicated to your daughter, Will. I cried, she writes. She also writes, my stepfather, dad, my stepfather's dad used to sing one in a million to my mom. I love that. Love that. Love that. Love that. Oh my goodness. My sister used to, she loved that song. One in a million. Larry Graham, Larry Graham. What a voice. What a voice. So I believe we have some more family members joining us on the phone. Are you still there? Hey, Sam, how y'all doing? Hello, good evening. How hey, are you Carol. today? Hey, Deanna. Say what, well, Deanna? What's going on, sir? What's happening? I'm known I'm as Mr. Say, Will. Say, oh, you say you got <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of love to give, huh? A lot, a lot of love. I heard that. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to say, uh, Deanna, um, I miss you with Derek Sanford uh, because of the classics. And uh, I want to share right quick, right? Since she was talking about grieving, yes. um, I just want to say I cried and I cried and I cried and I cried so many tears. And the tears and the tears and the tears I cried so many years. I yearned and I yearned and I yearned and I yearned. Oh, how I yearned. So I lift my head up to the sky. Heavenly Father, smile down on your helpless children and teach them to love one another and give love the power and give love the glory because Jesus is love and he won't let you down. And birds fly, plain sky, you ever wonder why children cry, tears of joy, tears of pain, just like the fallen rain, because the ones that we care for give us so much pain. Mm -hmm. And that's all I had to share. Beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. So that's beautiful. very kind of you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I miss Derek and I'm still very, very close to him. And I was looking at pictures just yesterday and a, a good friend of mine put together an Aretha Franklin interview that we did uh, some time ago uh, and sent it to me just yesterday. So I was listening to this Aretha Franklin, Derek Sampson and Deanna Williams interview. And we were on the air together consistently every Sunday mm -hmm. for 13 years. That's a long time in radio time. It is, it is. Yeah. It's a long time. Yeah. And I would fly in from California or Chicago, wherever I was, to do Soulful Sunday with Derek and the Battle of the Best. So thank you so much for that love and that that wonderful memory. You reminded me of a really beautiful time in my life with a very special friend. Mm. All right. I can't thank you all enough for the love that you share constantly and that you... Uh, Carol, you sit in for me. I did, I did, I did. I did. I miss hearing you and Derek. I miss hearing the two of you. Oh and my Will God. was a guest on our show many times. Many times, yeah, yeah. Years. Got my butt kicked with the battle of the best, you know. <laughs> I think, I think Freddie Jackson beat me once or twice. Did Luther you? beat me every time. You know? I know you told me one time you were like, "Don't ever put me up against Luther again." Please no. <laughs> was your friend. Oh my god. Don't let this exterior think that I'm I'm confident about anything. You know what? As creatives, that's what that's what, you know what? 
That's a, <laughs> oh, there's not been a truer statement. Uh, I believe we have another one of our family members on the phone. Are you still there? I am here. Hello. How are you? I am how well. Are you there? You. I hey, am here. <laughs> What's going on, man? Hey, brother. Well, look. I don't know if you recall the last time you was on, and um, and I'm just talking. We had a a great conversation, and I just want you to know, my brother. Ever since that conversation with you and my sis, my love life has been nothing but way, 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 way up. All right. Uh, hey, uh, how up is it? And I'm, hey, 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 family show. And I and I'm hey, and I'm just gonna say, you know, thank you, brother, for just, you know, putting those kind of love waves in the air. And you know, man, my sister was talking, I believe, last night when we were talking about, you know, how a lot of folks that are going through some things and um because of love, you know, they get caught up in this infatuation of love and not really knowing what love is, that mm -hmm. they can love you to death and, and, and meaning that they really mean it, that when things don't go right, I will kill you or get you killed. So I am just wanted to just share again to those folks that get caught up that it is a a lot of mental health issues around love and our our family, our people, you know, we got to understand we do love to death because we are very loving. We are very giving people and we, um, you know, it's just part of who we are. It's part of our makeup. And if we can deal with some of the, the mental health challenges that we are facing you know, with our everyday life, we won't get love mixed up with infatuation mm. or love that can turn to hate. So I just wanted to speak a little bit on that. And if you don't allow me to just two more things, you know, Deanna, when you had Gene Kahn on, I was trying to get on because when Gene Kahn, when she sang that, um, Bill, um, uh, the congressman, um, excuse me, I'm, I'm saying Bill Moore, I'm thinking about the little, but, um, our congressman, William, um, what was our congressman name? You talking about William Gray? William Gray, William Gray. When William Gray first got inaugurated, Gene Kahn, um, did a concert in Washington. Um, at his inauguration, mm -hmm. and she was, you know, back in the days of the uptown, you know, you always ran into somebody, it was always, you know, could greet somebody. But I did, I, I was so shocked and so infatuated <laughs> with her that I, I'm telling you, Deanna, I had grabbed her and hugged her. And I'm just telling you, I, that's been one of the things that's been a part of, you know, my, how do you say, my love history of really loving up on somebody that you don't know. And when she gave me her autograph, I had that autograph, a picture, she gave me a picture of her and an autograph. And I remember I had that picture for at least 30, 40 years in my wallet. Mm -hmm. so I wanted to share that moment when she was on your show. And last but not least, when we talk about music that just touched your soul, mm -hmm. the first time I heard Wishing on a Star, Oof. and I don't know if any of y'all know anything about North Philly, but mm -hmm. at Jefferson and Ridge, we had uh, Mr. Piggy. We had the barbecue place there. And it is always jam-packed. But this Friday... It was jam-packed, and when Wishing on a Star came on, hey, Will, <laughs> you know how you touch people so... That record felt so good that I was sliding down 
I was sliding down the wall before I was noticing. <laughs> I was sliding on to the floor, and everybody was looking at me <laughs> like, well, what's wrong with him? <laughs> <laughs> it was just that the record had touched, you know, as, as it just touched your essence, and you get lost in it. So, brother, I just thank you for just always having the um, the wherewithal, man, to touch our soul mm -hmm. to make us feel when you sing, man, you know, you, the melody, the words. And um, let me just keep going on. Diana, I want to thank you for being the historian you are. Mm -hmm. It's always good to see you on um, BET and Uncensored, you know, with all your stories. You know, you are just a walking historical black music and, yes. and, and yes. his, historical um, encyclopedia. We thank you. And my love, my sis, we just thank you for always bringing all this love together. Oh. So enjoy, everyone. Thank you all for giving me those moments of pure joy because it ain't nothing like moments of pure joy i love y'all thank you brother thank appreciate you. that man we thank you sir you more i just want to say thank you to friendly fred and brother ty and ron for calling in thus far family stay with us we're going to take a short break but we'll be right back the viagra of love me the viagra of love keep them up it keeps them up all the way Word Radio Digital Tip of the Month with Stephanie Humphrey. Brought to you by Comcast. It's always useful to have some tips on how to make your smartphone battery last longer. And here are a couple you might not have thought of. First, closing the apps on your phone probably won't save battery life. That may have been the case with earlier technology, but today's phones are optimized for apps and opening them from scratch actually takes more battery power than just keeping them open. If you like streaming things like music, podcasts, or movies, try downloading the content to your phone to listen offline if that option is available. Streaming from the internet uses up way more battery life than listening to something that's stored in your phone's memory. So think about using these two tips to make sure your smartphone battery lasts all day. Stay tuned to WURD for more tips and stay connected with us at wordradio.com. Pollution from trucks is a public health crisis. Diesel burning trucks belch dangerous levels of pollution and communities living near ports and along freight corridors breathe especially high levels of this dirty air. But this crisis has a solution. My name is Sasan Sadat and I work for Earth Justice. I'm working to clean up our air quality, particularly for communities that bear the burden of diesel pollution. For the sake of our lungs, our health, and our climate, the future of trucking in this country has got to be zero emissions. Until then, I will never rest. Earth Justice is a national legal nonprofit defending the environment and people's health. Earth Justice is fighting to save lives, protect our climate, and strengthen our economy through the shift to zero emissions. If clean air matters to you, visit us at earthjustice.org. Earth Justice, because the earth needs a good lawyer. Need a minute? Take a breath and breathe in positivity. Here are words of joy and empowerment from Word Radio. This is Valerie Harrison, Vice President for Public Affairs at Temple University. The power, purpose, and possibility of Black women are clear. While we can be very different, we share the authenticity of Maya Angelou, the community-mindedness of Ella Baker, the courage of Harriet Tubman, and the elegance and grace of Coretta Scott King. We bring our whole selves to every experience. Remember who you are. You are a light in darkness. You are the best of what it means to be human. I'm Valerie Harrison. This joy and empowerment vignette was brought to you by Comcast. We're bringing joy and power to the people. This is Word Radio, 900 AM and 96.1 FM, WURD, Philadelphia. Celebrating 20 years of progressive black talk media. Streaming online at wordradio.com and the Word Radio app. Let me tell you something, and don't you ever forget it. Success is nothing without someone you love to share it with. You're listening to Love and Life with Carol Riddick on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media.
Hey there, family. Welcome back. You are tuned in to the top of the second hour of love and life right here on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. You know I'm going to say it just because I like to do so. That's wurdradio.com. We are joined by none other than my beloveds tonight, both Deanna Williams and Mr. Will Downing. We've been talking and talking and we've been kikiing, but you know what? I ask them tonight to come here because I want to tonight to be a celebration of our loved ones that have transitioned, our loved ones who are lost but not forgotten. And I thought it would be a great way for us all to celebrate all of our loved ones who are lost but not forgotten. I want to go back to our socials for a moment to let you know that I see you. I see you. We see you there. Joey Dixon writes, peace, word, family, one love and jazz to you. We love that. Love that. We're so glad that you're here with us. Today is the day that I said, okay, you know what? Let's recognize our babies, our babies, their babies, our babies who are no longer with us. in celebration and honor and just as you say in legacy and keeping the memory alive of Aaron Shoban Downing and Issa Saladin Gamble. That's what tonight is about. And of course, now y'all know y'all hear me talk about my mother and my father all the time. I know you're tired of it, but guess what? They're my love bugs and I just can't help but do so because they don't leave me. You know, I know they don't leave me. So I want you to know too that it's all right. It's all right, because that's what we do. That's what we do. This is what family is all about. This is what love and life is all about. We talk about everything here, don't we? Because I know I tell y'all enough of my business. I'm so, I'm so transparent, Lord. And so I tell you all the time because I want you to know that it's okay. It's okay to talk about it. As a matter of fact, I believe it's healthy to do so. I believe it's healthy to share. So I've talked so much in this last moment, but what I would like, what I would like, is for us each to share one, I'd say one funny memory that we have of the loved ones that we're talking about tonight. Do you have one funny memory? What is one memory? Or maybe just a good memory. It might be your favorite memory um, of, of, of the individuals that we're sharing tonight. I, I can start. I'll start with Marcine Riddick. My mother, my mother, my mother. So my mother was Marcine Riddick. Now, Deanna and Will have heard this already, but uh, family, I'd like to believe that I'm good and grown. And at the time I was married and I had a passion party. That's what they called it, a passion party. So, you know, passion parties where they have all the toys and everything else. Yes, we were adults here, right? Close the ears of the children. So in any event, I had a passion party. My mother was there. Yes, she was. Yes, she was. How embarrassing. But she was there. Okay. So the, um, the representative was demonstrating toys. And my mother said, oh, no, I like that one because that's the one. I said, no, 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 no. (laughs) I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear it. But my mother, she was a person who loved, she just had so much fun. Whatever, Whatever it was, she was going to make sure she enjoyed herself. Whatever the event was, even if she went in there with her, with her teeth clenched, like, I don't want to be here. By the time she walked out. She would have you laughing and somebody else because she was going to be a clown. That was my mother. That was my mother. Now, I know those of you who know her well, you didn't know that about her. But that was one of my one of my favorite memories of her because we had so much fun that night. Just, you know, just having good old girl fun. So that was my memory. One of my memories because, you know, y'all have heard some. <laughs> I know I don't expect you all to share uh, any memories uh, quite like that, but if you have, I, you <laughs> that. <laughs> I can't top that one. That's a, yeah. that's, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> well, yes, you heard me tell you enough about my mother and my father. Those two, Didi, you you know you heard some about Marcine Riddick and Pee Wee Marshall. Oh. That will have you say, uh, but a beautiful memory that you could share with us. Well, one of my memories of your mother was when your father passed and we were in church and we were in the rear of the church. And I went over to your mother and I said, Mama, my my heartfelt condolences. You know, my heart was heavy. I love you. And this was a you know passing of your loved one. And your mother said, you don't need to tell me. Tell her. Tell Carol. 
because Carol's parents had not been together in decades, you know? And her mother was like, very matter of fact, like, I don't need your condolences. Give it to, give it to the child, give it to your friend. And I was just, it was so, Floored. so Mama Marcine, you know, it was so direct, uh, oh. no chaser. I know in my family, and I will say this, that Will and I, having been friends for decades, yeah. Um, one of the things that bonded us was, of course, the music and just our joie de vivre. We, we both are pretty joyful people. Mm -hmm. um, and we deal with crisis and issues with humor. Will has the best sense of humor in the most <laughs> tragic moments. You know, he, he's sensitive and compassionate, but, you know, he'll come with the one-liner that will just... Yeah. It, right? Am I right, Carol? I, I, you are so you. right. <laughs> so grip you. He's he's naturally funny, and I say to him all the time, "You easily could do stand up comedy." He does oh. it in his show. He's got about jokes to say. liners right during his show. <laughs> but we comforted each other through the years as we talk about May being Mental Health Month um, because our our children had mental health issues. Right. And literally, right. I would say that he and I were each other's. Um, oh, yeah. We would often do, we would do, well, I can top that one. We would have yeah. these conversations. <laughs> and I'm talking about when our children were teenagers, very, very oh, yeah. young. Mm -hmm. We would talk about, you know, into their emancipation as a young adults and, and moving forward in life. It was constantly an exchange of information mm -hmm. about our children. My son, Issa Saladin Gamble, as you mentioned, Carol, passed away almost a year. May 10th will be the anniversary of his transition. And I will tell you that the humor was sucked out of our family with his transition. Saladin was the comedic individual who would make all of us laugh through the worst times. I mean, it's just the, just the house could be falling down and Saladin would make a statement or an observation that would have us all in stitches. So uh, I remember very close to the time that he transitioned, I said, well, the comedian has left the building. Oh, wow. You know, the funniest person in our family is, is no longer physically present, but we have tons of memories of things that he said and did, our nicknames for him that just sustain us and also comfort us. You know, because mm -hmm. just when we were talking earlier about Will hearing two songs that reminded him of his father, that were his father's favorite, and his reaction to hearing those songs, same thing happens to me, to you, Carol, and mm -hmm. I'm sure probably to all of our listeners. Mm -hmm. We all have loved ones who have physically departed from this plane where we can't talk to them physically. Mm -hmm. um, you can, I, I have major dialogues with my child. Uh, but at the end of the day, their spirit permeates mm -hmm. our lives. I know right. my child is dead and I've grieved all different kinds of ways. But what is comforting to me is to remember his light mm -hmm. and to remember those good times and the bad times, you know, put them in perspective. Um, but it's the good times that I cling to. I cling to my son saying, yo, ma, can you make me that spaghetti that you make with turkey sauce? I'm on my way. Mm -hmm. You know, those kinds of things. I see right. him and I hear him everywhere all the time. Mm -hmm. So physically, while he is not present, he is more present now since he physically transitioned. He is so, he's so very present in my experience and I'll, I'll stop there. That was so beautifully that, that was beautiful. expressed. It was so beautifully expressed. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, Saladin, um, I remember you saying that day uh, about the comedy, the comedic um, relief in your family was going. I remember that. I remember you making that statement. And when you, when you said that, all I can remember is that are, are all the times he would, he had made me laugh and he would do it so effortlessly. He, that was just who he was. He would just, just like you, sir, uh, Mr. Will. Now what? Was, I in, shouldn't, in, what? Huh? In, in conversation. In any situation. In any situation. I would just be talking. I was like, yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, hey, Saladin. Hey, Carol. And I would say something and he would, it would be a quip like, 
well, why, why you, we had to sing that too? Why, you know, and it would be just that fast, just that fast. Like, how, you know, how'd you even think of that? Like, you know, like, you because you'd just be talking, you would just be in general conversation and you do that. And I know I always, I always have to catch myself because I will, get, I will watch you out of the side of my eye because I know when I think something, something, He's all this one here, Mr. Will, has already <laughs> thought it 10 minutes prior. By the time I get to it, he's already thought it, processed it, and has the whole, you know, line of jokes to go with it. But I mean, but I think that's a beautiful thing. It is. That speaks so highly about your vibration and about your light. You know, that I think that is wonderful. I want to take a second before we continue our conversation to recognize our family members on our socials. Freddie, Freddie Sawyer says, hey, y'all. Good to see you both. Love for y'all. We love you more. You is that Freddie Fred? Yes, yes. Hey. <laughs> hey, Freddie. Um, again, family, if you have just joined us. You're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, progressive Black talk media on air and online at wordradio.com. That's wurdradio.com. Listen, talk with us. Join the discussion. Join the conversation. Share with us. Uh, share with us a story about one of your loved ones. I'm telling you, this is what we all need. This is what we all need. Communication is good. It is wonderful. You can call us at 215-634-8065, or you can call us toll free at 1-866-361-0900. You know, every time I say something, Will, I see you look at what? me because you know what he does, family? I'm going to tell you what he does. What he does is he laughs at me because of my pronunciation. I just, and I know every time I say something, I see you. <laughs> I see you. I can just hear you. <laughs> Listen, all I know is when I get hungry and I'm about, I'm about to eat a a sandwich. I a know, sandwich. I yes, I, I, I have never <laughs> in all of my days, and I've been on the planet quite a few years. <laughs> I've never you heard know. anyone say sandwich. sandwich. I say, hey, Carol, sandwich. we're gonna go grab something to eat. What are you gonna have? Well, you know, I'm going to have a sandwich. It is said, a sandwich. A what? It is. A what? Talk about enunciating <laughs> the queen and the king's English. Yeah. <laughs> like it. a sand. That don't even sound good. Sand it's amazing. <laughs> when, you get the, when you get a good enough one, it's a great sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> it is. So, Will, listen, you know what? I, I, I don't want you to be left out of this conversation. Oh, Share a okay. story with us. Well, it, it, it's funny. It's a story that um, started out as a, I'm not going to say a bad thing, but being upset. Okay. All of us being upset and then laughing. Okay. So my daughter, Siobhan, was very young. And uh, my well, now ex-wife, my wife at the time, we were separated. So I would get the kids on the weekend. So I'd pick them up and bring them to my house and get them, you know, anything that they wanted, you know, to eat and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So one day we're at home, it's a Friday, and uh, my wife calls and she is going in on me. Like, I, you, I, I, I can't believe, I, I'm gonna, I, I'm like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. She goes, Siobhan called me and she told me that uh, you only gave her a Tic Tac for dinner. <laughs> no. So, okay, so I'm like, I'm on, like, what are you talking about? Yeah. I'm gonna come and get her right now, and I'm gonna call the, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I said, I said, stop. And this is the days before cell phones. I said, I yelled upstairs to Siobhan, pick up the telephone. So she picks up a hard, hard line telephone, and I'm on one line, and mom's on the other, and she's a. I said, what did you have for dinner? <laughs> well, I had, a, I had a hamburger, I had french fries, and I had a soda. I said, why did you tell your mother that you only had a Tic Tac? <laughs> because I wanted pizza. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> what you call Ronnie. And so, oh, oh, yeah, that's what you... Tic -tac. she. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you know... I've, I'm, I've yet to hear an apology, but it was sort of like, oh, he's, he's yet to I was like, it. okay, all right, okay. And, and, and we're going to talk about this when you get home. And then it was oh just a hang God. up. Oh, and then, you know, so it's kind of like, oh. come on, kid. So 
you know, I still laugh about that to this day. But I just remember at that moment, like, World War Three is about to start. Like, this is how it starts. It starts over a Tic Tac. Why World War Three. Well, oh over, over a Tic Tac. You gave her a Tic Tac. <laughs> you know he and I, Will and I have a great memory of Siobhan because he brought her to a concert oh. in J Pack. <laughs> and she got sick and she threw up. I guess it was Siobhan. I think I was Asia. I think I was oh, Asia. Asia. Definitely was Asia. That's right. It was, it was Asia, yeah. Was Asia. Oh, no. was younger daughter. It was oh, Asia. Okay. Okay, can I share this one real quick Absolutely. before we go to break? Before, yes. All right. All right. So as she said, you know, we went to this concert, but during the day, um, I had to do a video shoot. It was like some sort of documentary, something we were filming. Mm -hmm. And we were at someone's home and my, you know, my child was young and she wouldn't be quiet. So everyone would just say, every time she would start talking, they said, hey, hey, come here, come here. You, you want some potato chips? You know, they oh. gave us some chips and then she'd sit down, she'd be quiet. And then we start filming some more and then she started talking, like, hey, hey, you want some pretzels? You know, this went on and on. You want some soda? You want some this? You want some that? This went on for hours. So then I had to go to NJ Pack to this concert because I promised Deanna I would go to this concert. So I go there, I take my daughter with me and we're sitting there and she's telling me like, Dad, you know, can, can we go home? I'm like, yeah, just we can hear a little bit more music and, you know, we'll wait until after the break and then we'll go. Dad, I just want to go home. I said, just, just chill. So De Deanna comes over during intermission and she sees my daughter fidgeting and, you know, and all this stuff. So Deanna says, I'll take her. I'm going to take her and she, she carries her, I guess, probably over to the, the, the bar and gets her like some orange juice or something. She comes back. We sit down and she, she says, Daddy, I just want to go home. I just want to. <laughs> <laughs> and she starts, she's throwing up everywhere on the back. I mean, and this is like the winter. People had the coats on the back of the seat. She's oh, throwing up on. She's throwing up. And oh. I'm like, oh no. It was a oh, oh no. Oh. And I <laughs> I like pick her up and like I'm carrying her <laughs> through through NJ Pack. She was walking down the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so <laughs> Deanna you sees me. She's like, no. <laughs> yeah, she's like, do you want to go? I said, no, nah, I think we're just gonna go. I think we left our coach. So now I'm walking down the street with my child. To go get to go to my car, and I'm holding her like this. She's throwing up in the streets, and then we finally get to the car. I've got it all over oh. me. It's all over her. We oh. get to the car. I put her in the car seat. We sit down, and I said, she she looks at me. She goes, "I feel better now. Can we go here? The man play the trumpet thing that he was gonna play." And I'm like, "No, absolutely not." Now. That's how it ended. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh! That oh was so no, I, I feel amazing. better now. I She's feel 26. Better now. 26. Wow. She's 26 now. Yeah, she's she's grown. Look, look. Uh, she's a grown Beautiful woman grown now. Woman. Beautiful <laughs> grown woman. Family. Oh my goodness. You hear us. You hear you hear what is happening. You hear what you're hearing right now is the happy inside of our hurt as we talk about all things good. Do you hear me? What we're doing is sharing with you the love that we have. Uh well. Age is silly. Age is 26, as we know. We share it with you the love that we have of some of our loved ones who are lost but not forgotten. We're inviting you to do the same. Um, Cheryl Brown on our social says, hey, Simple Life says, oh, wow. To that story that you just <laughs> shared, Cheryl says, oh, no. Um, but what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a short break. And when we get back, we have something very special that Mr. Downing, Mr. Will, I'm sorry, is going yeah. to share with us. So please stay with us because we will be right back. <laughs> Jeff Brown, as you know by now, is a grocer who used his ShopRite supermarkets to address food deserts. His stores now feed about a quarter of all Philadelphians. More, Jeff started a program to hire the formerly incarcerated. His stores employ over 500 returning citizens. Jeff's solution became a national model for combating a food crisis and poverty. During COVID, when city government shut down, Jeff Brown raised money to support over 1,100 small businesses. He kept neighborhoods alive, from barbershops to our pre-K centers. Jeff Brown gives away numerous community gifts every year, from computer centers across the city to basketball courts for the youth. 
On Thanksgiving, he provides thousands of turkeys to help feed families across Philadelphia. So vote. Vote early. Together we can fight back. Jeff Brown is the mayor we need to change things and make our city safe and healthy again. Paid for by Jeff Brown for Mayor. Looking to grow and thrive while making a difference in the lives of young people? Come down to the Richard Allen Prep Charter School's Educator Career Fair on Saturday, May 6th. They are looking for talented and committed educators to join their community. They have openings for educators, instructional aides, administrative staff, and much more. That's Saturday, May 6th from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. at 2601 South 58th Street in Philadelphia. Dress professionally and bring copies of your resume for interviews on the spot. Visit their website at www rapcs.org to register. Let's face it, life looks a little different. During these times, we're doing our best to keep our minds and bodies strong. And getting a flu shot helps us stay healthy, so we don't miss out on what matters, like having game night at home. <coughs> yeah, can't do that while sick with the flu. Now imagine family movie night that your daughter can't live without. Well, that's ruined. And don't forget your uncle's socially distanced cookout. <coughs> See, that's why it's important to be at our strongest. Every year, millions of people in the U.S. get the flu. Especially now, no one has time to miss out on moments that matter. So get your flu shot. Find out more at getmyflushot.org. Brought to you by the AMA, CDC, and the Ad Council. Which mayoral candidate will make sure that Black Philadelphia is included in high-tech, high-wage job growth? Who will unlock access to venture capital for Black innovators? Which candidate knows how to educate our children and prepare them for careers of the future? Hear from the candidates on these topics at Words Mayoral Candidate Forum, Inclusion, Innovation, and Philadelphia's Future. This event takes place Tuesday, May 9th at 6 p.m. during Philly Tech Week. Join us at the University City Science Center at 3675 Mark. Market Street. To register, go to wordradio.com forward slash Tech Week. This event is part of Every Voice, Every Vote, brought to you in partnership with Philly Tech Week, Technically Philly, and the University City Science Center. You're listening to Love and Life with Carol Riddick on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. Hey there, family. Welcome back. You are tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. That's wurdradio.com. We've enjoyed so much of your contributions tonight. So many of you have called in and you're writing us and you're still doing so. And we invite you to continue to do so. Um, Mark Pena on our socials. Hey, Mark writes awesome show. Oh, thank you so much. As usual, Carol, I have to say, my Spotify recap 2021 and 22 has had Mr. Will Downing's music as my number one played. I know Wishing on a Star was one of them. A Million Ways took the other year. He writes, I love the concerts. Oh, and Carol is such a great choice to duet with. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for the soul yeah. music. And Deanna, you have added so much awesome content to radio. Thank you. We all share your sentiment. Oh, we share your sentiment, Mark. And thank you for sharing that. Thank you to all of you for sharing the love that you are sharing with us tonight. To our callers, uh, we've heard thus far, I believe it was from Ron, it was Brother Ty, it was from Friendly Fred. Um, you too can call us if you feel so inclined to do so. You can call us at 215 634 8065, or you can call us at 1 866 3610900. What I'd like to do right now is take this time. Um, I want to give the floor to the loved ones that we've been talking about and celebrating, especially in this episode. Um, we've been celebrating Issa Saladin Gamble, whose um, 
anniversary of transitioning is just in eight days, in eight mm-hmm. days. And to Siobhan, we love you both. We love you both. We love you both. We love you both. I can't say it enough. Oh, Chloe's joined. For those of you who know my fur child, she's sending her love. No, no. So she's come <laughs> to say hello as well. She has. Will, don't you dare do it. I think she I said it. nothing. Yeah. I think what? she did that for Will. So in <laughs> any event, family, uh, Will, I would like for you to share with us, because I think this is such a beautiful sentiment and a beautiful thing that you have done as a tribute. But I also look at it as a way for us all to um, to take the opportunity to show and demonstrate how we love our, our, our loved ones as well. It's just a great way to do so. Um, and family members, for those of you who are unaware of what I'm talking about. It is of the love song, because that's what it is. It's a tribute to Siobhan, the song that is titled Till We Meet Again. Talk to us a little bit about that, please, because I'm so excited to share. Well, uh, for those who don't know, my child uh, passed away on January the 11th. And the reason that we're here uh, today, we're speaking on mental, um, I don't want to say it, mental awareness Mm -hmm. mental health awareness Mm -hmm. uh my child unfortunately took her own life on the 11th and uh of january this year and uh this was me and my family uh using my platform to kind of spread the word for others who may be going through something like that uh depression of some sort Mm -hmm. bipolar any kind of uh illness in that regard Mm -hmm. Uh, And to let people know that you are not alone in your struggle and trying to help those uh, to also encourage people who are going through that sort of thing personally to go get the professional help that they need. But this was like a a tribute and also almost like a letter um, and a conversation with my daughter, Erin Siobhan. Um, And and when you hear, please listen carefully to the lyrics. And what I'm saying right now is going to make a lot more sense. And I'm sure we'll uh, re- uh, We'll recap over what you saw and what you heard. I love that family. Uh, we share with you the video of Till We Meet Again. I wish you could tell me what the hell was on your mind mm-hmm. when I last talked with you. It seemed like you were doing fine. Mm-hmm. You were not alone, cause someone was watching over you. Till we meet again Till we meet again Dealing with the ups and downs Of this life Merry go round You are much too young to be Taking things so seriously I know that you're safe Cause heaven's watching over you Until we meet again Until we meet again Right here 
girl, you have missed your soul Tell me uh. again From my head to the head, I must have died you down But God's gonna, gonna hide you too Till I see your face again Till we meet again Cause I truly believe this is not the end Not the end Absolutely beautiful. Um, family, what I'd like to do now is go to our socials. We're receiving some love. That is so appreciated. Alfredia is sharing love. Alfredia writes that uh, she shed tears the first time she saw the video and it was hard to see her forever friend cry but the song is so beautifully done I, I agree I, I think it's it's a beautiful beautiful tribute it's a beautiful love letter it is such a beautiful love letter simply simple life rights <clears throat> I still have the video where Will sent to me through my younger brother a celebrity father for, photographer from Connecticut and Cheryl writes it's an absolutely beautiful song um I watch it and so many so many emotions so I feel so many emotions we love you Will we love you Will we love you we love you and I want to say personally and I thank you both so much for sharing for sharing because I do believe it to be therapeutic but I also know how painful it is to relive moments and memories and um well, I think it's wonderful that Will has done this because Absolutely. we do not talk about mental health issues enough in the Black community. Sure. I remember growing up, we would say things like, oh, that boy is crazy. Or even, you know, mm -hmm. I know alcoholism is really big in my family. And I couldn't understand it until I was way older. I was like, why are they all drinking? Why mm -hmm. are they getting drunk? Well, they're masking the pain. Mm -hmm. They're masking, you know, we as Black people in this country We've gone we through so much and we still are going through so much. And, you know, with children, as we are discussing our children, you know, we can do our best to reach and touch them, especially when we see that they're in crisis. But as you reference in the song, you know, last time I talked to you, you were fine. Last yeah, time I saw my son, he was okay. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then he was no longer alive. And Will, for you, my heart goes out to you and to Ronnie and to Will and and to Audrey and to Asia, your your mother, your your mm -hmm. you know your sisters, your entire family that I've had the pleasure of meeting over the years, because this is it's a family loss and for right. friends and for community as well. Exactly. And it's still fresh for you. This just happened. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. when I look at where I am, like Carol said, I didn't know it was eight days away, but yeah, it's eight days away for me. Right. And Carol was with me the day that I got the news of my son's transition and I wow. uh, was just like right there on the spot. And, okay. you know, I didn't allow myself to grieve for the yeah. longest time because I felt it was imperative to be strong. I quietly grieved. I mean, when I say quietly, like quietly, mm -hmm. where I wouldn't even totally acknowledge that I was grieving and I felt the need to be strong for my two living children um, just like, you know, Will has a, a son and a daughter mm -hmm. living. So, you know, you know, they're going through a certain level of trauma. Right. So you do your right. best 
mm-hmm. to be light and bright and upbeat. Right. Right. Done all of that. And I would say about a month or so ago, I had a complete and total unravel. I could right. no longer suppress you know, the grief and it bubbled up to the surface, just like Will, when you mentioned driving and you heard your father's songs and you had to pull over. I mean, the thing about, this is what I'm noticing about grief is that don't suppress it, express it, let it come out, talk about it. Uh, You know, everybody, my family, a lot of people were like, you need therapy. I was in therapy until the day that I got news about my son's death. And at that point, I felt like I didn't want to sit and talk about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even with my doctor, with whom I'd been in therapy, I just I just did not want to talk about it. But now I'm a lot freer uh, discussing the fact that I have moments of great deep and I know, Will, you can relate to this. And any and everybody who is listening to us who has experienced death, Carol, you've lost your parents and loved ones. you know, Will, it reminds me of your song, Only the Good Die Young. Right. Is, that, mm-hmm. is that the title yeah. of it? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's it. The song mm-hmm. Hearing mm-hmm. in my mind, and certainly our children were young. No, no parent should ever have to bury a child. That's right. But we've been through that, and that's we're right. very strong in our faith. We're very close to our families and our friends. Like I said, Carol was front and center in my house the day that my family was together praying and receiving this this shocking news about a loved one in our family dying. So I wanna just say to anyone who's going through a mental health crisis, whether you're schizophrenic, bipolar, Mm -hmm. you suffer from depression, anxiety, whatever it is that is your issue, get help. Mm -hmm. Feel free to speak to somebody. And if you're in crisis, pick up the phone and call the crisis Call the 911, right. call the crisis suicide line. Yeah, 988, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is it 988 now? It, it, well, yeah, that, that's a suicide yeah, mm-hmm. uh, number to call. But yeah, it, it, it's funny, even within a song, you hear her voice in the middle there. That's what gets me every time. Sure. Um, and she was saying Happy New Year to me. So literally, I you know, heard her voice. Well, I heard her voice four or five days after that. I talked to her on like the fourth or the fifth. And but the first, which is the documented for you guys to all hear, was the first of the, the top of the year. And 11 days later, she was dead. <laughs> so it went from like this, you know, jovial kind of, hey, woo-hoo, new year, you know. And I talked to her the week prior. I said, hey, everything good? Oh, it's fantastic. This, that, and the other. Like the first line in the song is, I wish you could tell me what the hell was on your mind. Like, I, I literally just talked to you. Like, mm-hmm. what happened between then and now? that you got to this point where you couldn't pick up the telephone and call me, couldn't call your grandmother, couldn't call your mother, couldn't call, like, how did you get here? How did, how did this happen? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's not new when, uh, when you have children that do things that like you may not necessarily agree with and you kind of chastise them, you have a conversation about it, but in the song it's saying, okay, you've done it, come here, I love you, you know, let's mm-hmm. think about this next time you're about to do something. I love you. I'm here for you. And that's really what the song is saying. So it's like, okay, chastisement, you know, hey, come on now, talk to me. What's going on? You're not here. Okay. Just for the record, I want you to know you were never alone. <laughs> you know, in anything that you're, you're not alone because someone was always watching over you. Well, okay, we're going to talk about this when we meet again, until we meet again. You know, I want you to remember that and know that God's going to hug you and this, that and the other. So that's kind of it was like a conversation between, you know, me and I almost also going to represent my ex-wife, Ronnie, and saying that to her. Like, all right, come on now. What what are you doing? All right, come here. Give me a hug. Give me a kiss. All right. Love you. You know, think. Think a little bit more. And you can cast you back out into the world and we do things together and all that sort of stuff. So just the, the fact that it happened so immediately. And uh, we had seen traits of, of, of things that were interesting mm-hmm. prior to that. But uh, in the early days, we did not seek professional help. So those were the mistakes that I made. I remember uh, talking to my father about it. And my father's from the country. My father's from like North Carolina, like deep in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. And I remember saying like, dad, I'm seeing some things. And he was like, well, you know, you work much better when you 
and you're that age. And, you know, so we kind of attributed it to growing pains. And then years later, I go back to him and I say, hey, dad, you know, I'm seeing this. And he was like, you know, you need to take her down home and, and let her run around in the fields and, 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 and let her eat some collard greens and some ice taters. And I was like, I don't know what ice taters are, but OK, for, for some reason, I don't think that's the answer. <laughs> and then years later, something would happen. And then he was finally like, you know, what are you going to do about this boy? I said, I told you this like seven, eight years ago. You told me to get him some collard greens and some ice taters. Like, OK. <laughs> See, you I, I had to break it up. But you, I, you, even I me. know. I know you did, but you know what? I'm going to take. Uh, uh, I'm going to take advantage of this moment, sir, Mr. Will. Uh, family, we. It's necessary for us to take a short break. Stay with us. We'll be right look up ice taters. That's all. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> they're real. <laughs> oh my goodness. COVID-19 may be milder for kids, except when it's not. Healthy kids can still become seriously ill and immunocompromised children and those with underlying conditions like asthma are even more susceptible. If your kids are unvaccinated, they're not protected. Protect your kids and everyone around them. Get them vaccinated or boosted today. Learn more at covid19.nj.gov. This is the story of a very special woman. In a matter of seconds, she turned herself into a great mathematician or an entrepreneur. Her knowledge was limitless and still is. She could also make monsters disappear, especially those that lurked in the shadows under the bed. Once, this woman put back together a teenage girl's broken heart, which had been shattered in a thousand pieces just by giving her a bear hug. She masqueraded as a regular person at work, but as a superhero at home. Everyone knows her as Gabriella. I still call her mom. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need to help, complete with tips and resources, at aarp.org caregiving. A public service announcement brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. What are you waiting for? If you've been enjoying the information and interviews WURD provides every day or come out to our community events, it might be time to become a member. This year marks the 20th anniversary of WURD, and there's no better time to join the forward movement. Sign up or renew your sustaining membership at just $90 or your digital membership for just $5 a month. Join online at wordradio.com forward slash membership or pick up the phone and give us a call at 215 425 7875 press 4 for assistance the time to join is now what am i waiting for jeff brown as you know by now is a grocer who used his shop right supermarkets to address food deserts his stores now feed about a quarter of all philadelphians jeff's solution became a national model for combating a food crisis and poverty for it jeff was honored at the state of the union address He's employed 2,300 union workers who get child care, retirement, and health care benefits. He's the only candidate who has worked with a large union workforce. City workers who pick up the trash, SEPTA workers, food workers, Teamsters, and more have all endorsed Jeff Brown for mayor for his management skills. Now the politicians, the same ones who denied services to our communities, are attacking Jeff. They don't want things to change. It suits their purposes. Together we can fight back. So vote. Vote early. Every voice counts. Jeff Brown is the mayor we need to change things and make our city safe and healthy again. Paid for by Jeff Brown for Mayor. What is love? You're listening to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. I think I know. Welcome back, family. You are tuned in to Love and Life, OMG, on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. That's wordradio.com, WURD radio.com. We 
we're talking about love. We're talking about life. We're talking about ice potatoes. Okay? <laughs> I don't understand it. When I tell you, I said to him, they don't exist. I don't know what an <laughs> ice potato is. Well, he proved to me that they do exist. Family. I tried to exist. told you. In the words of my late grandmother, I tried to told you. <laughs> I see this ice potato. He look, he said he. I, I sent it to your phone as well. He sure did. He sent yeah. us the information. He, okay. <laughs> In the commercial break, family, let me tell you, Mr. Will was Mr. texting us and informing us, educating us, okay, about <laughs> ice taters. Ice taters, baby. Ice taters. Let them run around the fields, get some oh, collard greens and ice God. taters. Goodness. Well, I might just have to go to North Carolina to get me some ice. No, taters. you can make some ice taters yourself. <laughs> you can, you can do it. You got an ice box, but it might not be authentic. You, you know, frigidaire. Know. you can do it. I, it might not be authentic you know, <laughs> enough, you know, but uh, I, I just wanted to take this moment again to just say thank you to you both. And well, that was a tremendous tribute. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. It's touching. It's loving. It's such a beautiful love letter and beautiful. Just doesn't, it just doesn't seem like enough. It's not a, it doesn't mean enough, you know, to express what I'm trying to say, but it touched so many of us. So many of our family members have written in Cheryl, Simple Life, Rowena, um, oh, Alfredia. Um, just everybody has so, so many beautiful sentiments that they're sharing. Um, on our socials, Veronica, just sending so much love to you both, Thank expressing you. their condolences to you both. And, and that's a beautiful thing. I want to personally say thank you to our family members um, for doing what we do right here on Love and Life. And that's, that's what we do. We express love. We share on Love and Life. We talk about it. Listen, that's how we get through it over above it you know that's that's what we do that's what i truly do believe and i'll repeat it i say to you i believe that something from anybody's story could be helpful to the next person so, you know i believe that's why communication is key but i will say this you know deanna deanna and i have both talked about our process our grieving like um i i do not know what it feels like to grieve the loss of a child but when i was mm. processing my the, the loss of my parents you know when my father passed I still had my mother my mother was my rock but when my mother passed I lost my world I lost the entire world but in doing so I lost all of a year uh, her service was on January 9th uh, 2019 so 1919 1919 I don't remember the remainder of 2019 my memory picks up in the beginning of January of 2020 at the end of it as a matter of fact I don't remember anything. I, I lost a whole block of time. Um, but it was because I was suppressing, so busy trying to, to move and, and, you know, because things had to be done. I had to, you know, I had to live. So um, I commend the both of you because I've talked with the two of you. And, and again, this is, it's still new and it's still fresh. And Will, you're creating and sharing what a beautiful way to, to work through and, and to, to help all of us and to embrace, you know, the love that we have for you in doing so. Um, it's just, that that's just a, a tremendous thing because- Well, you know, what, what's the point of having a platform if you're not going to, you know, help others? Mm -hmm. So it's therapeutic for me, you know, to say it and, and also representing the family and how, you know, we felt as a family or feel as a family mm -hmm. and hopefully helping, you know, those who are in need. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I believe it was your father um had passed away we were on a plane together and we got off the plane and we were walking down the, the the way to get to our bags or whatever and you just had this look on your face and you were like i said well i said well what's wrong with you i made a joke i said what, what's wrong with you he said my dad just passed away yeah and i said carol are you okay she said yeah um you know um let's go do this show and i immediately yeah. said oh yeah. no oh no no yeah. you're going home now I'm sending you. I'm sending you home. I was. I, I said did. black ass is what I he said. Sure did. I was, I was he trying sure to avoid did. saying it. He I sure said, did. I, said, I was no, in automatic mode. Yeah, I was, I was like, no, no, no. I was in autopilot. You, you're not going to work. She said, no, I can just work through it. I was like, oh no, no. You're you're not even leaving the airport. Like yeah. I'm buying you he a did. ticket right now. I'm sending you home. He did. He did. <laughs> it, it, we 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 had flown from uh, Dallas, Texas to L.A. We had just arrived in L.A. Yeah. We had a baggage claim. My yep. brother called me, and my brother said, "Dad is non-responsive," and um, 
he said, you know, I tried to resuscitate and nothing was happening. And, and I was on the phone with him when you were looking at me when, you know, when I was listening and I was telling him, well, do this and do that and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and when I got off the phone, the, the, he had called emergency services and they had just come. And that's what I was explaining to you. And you were on the phone. You, when you told me, you were like, uh, uh, you were immediately on the phone. And before I got to my gate, my father was gone. So we had parted. I was, I remember what, it was the one and only time I had ever, ever been in LAX and I was the only person in TSA. There was not, wow. not another person. It, I, it, it is, it is one of the most uh, like memorable moments of my life. I will never forget that moment because I was walking by myself when they told me he passed and I get to TSA and there's nobody there but me. Wow. Nobody. And uh, I will never, ever forget that. And I was so lost. I couldn't release his body. I didn't let, I didn't allow them to release him for almost a week. They, t they told me, miss, you have to let him go. I, I visited my father in the morgue the entire week because I couldn't let go. But uh, family, uh, you know, here we are. We are at the point of the show where it's time for me to say our goodbyes. I hate this. I hate this. And especially Aww. on that note. But what I will say is that we all have a happy inside our hurt. We do. We all have such a happy inside our hurt because we have the love of these loved ones um, whose memories we're sharing with you tonight. And we have each other, this little triad right here. <laughs> we call each go. other, you know, as long as there is love, okay? And we have so much love for one another and for you too. And we appreciate the love that you've shared with us tonight. Um, I want to extend tremendous gratitude to each and every one of you as you continue to support love and life. Special thanks to you, lady. <laughs> Ms. Deanna Williams. <laughs> <laughs> and to you, Mr. Will, Whoa, Will this Downing, is yes, yes, this is a moment going down in history for sharing your time, your energy, your attention, your love, just everything for sharing all of you with us and with me. It is so greatly appreciated. I want to say thank you to our callers tonight, to Ron, to Brother Ty, to Friendly Fred. Um, thank you also to all of our family members who've reached out on our socials. Um, thank you. Special thanks to Niall Jax for making sure everything ran smoothly tonight and to Kayla J who's absent tonight, but we know that she's here. Um, her love is here with us. Family, I tell you this every single night and I want you to never forget this. We're all in this together. So be good to you, but be good to those around you. And be sure to join me Monday through Thursday. 7 until 9 p.m. Eastern Time for another edition of Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. Good night, everybody. You know how I feel. Breeze drifting on by. You know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day. It's a new life for me, oh. It's a new day, it's a new life for me, yeah.